Ukrainian forces have so far managed to hold on to the capital, Kyiv, defying U.S. intelligence assessments, despite the increasing intensity of the Russian onslaught. But U.S. officials are now warning that Russia could soon increase the intensity of their attack. They have suffered setbacks, but I don't think we can just assume that they're going to stay set back. Satellite images show a Russian military convoy getting closer to Kyiv from the north. The head of the convoy most recently observed at an airport fewer than 20 miles from the city center. As the Ukrainians try to hold off the Russian advance across the country, the U.S. and its allies are keeping up the pressure on the financial front, sanctioning Russia's central bank, essentially cutting off Vladimir Putin's ability to support the Russian ruble, which fell as much as 30 percent on Monday. These actions will severely impact Putin's inner circle, impede the Kremlin's use of its international reserves and limit its ability to fund ongoing destabilizing activities. And in a historic move, even Switzerland, long a bastion of neutrality, has decided to match the European Union's sanctions on Russia. De la Russie contre Ukraine. Russia's attack against Ukraine is unacceptable with regards to international law, unacceptable politically speaking, and unacceptable from a moral point of view. As the war continues to rage, Russia has come to the negotiating table with Ukraine. Ukraine says their primary aim is a ceasefire and cessation of hostilities. Russia says the two sides found points where they could make progress, a second round of talks will take place in the coming days. Though Ukrainian President Zelensky sounded pessimistic before the talks began. I don't really believe in the result of this meeting, but let them try. So then later on, no citizen of Ukraine would have any doubt that I, the president, did not try to stop the war when I had a chance. Today, the U.S. made a different kind of move on the diplomatic front, expelling 12 Russian diplomats from the U.N., accusing them of espionage activities, but noting this process had been going on for several months. CNN has reached out to the State Department for comment. Military aid is still pouring into Ukraine, the Biden administration approving another $350 million of security assistance over the weekend. And even Sweden, a non-NATO member, announced they'd be sending 5,000 anti-tank weapons, 5,000 helmets, 5,000 body shields, and 135,000 field rations. We're going to continue to provide security assistance uh, to, to Ukrainian armed forces. The Ukrainians have been effective at, at using these weapons and these systems um, and, about, and, and at uh, resisting and, uh, and pushing back uh, Russian forces. Germany finally announced it would send weapons to Ukraine as well and has said it will hike its own defense spending in light of Russia's continued aggression. President Putin President Putin should not underestimate our determination to defend every square meter of our alliance's territory together with our allies. Tonight, the latest satellite images show the sheer immensity, Anderson, of that Russian force now making its way from the north towards Kyiv. It stretches 40 miles long, imagine that, from a point about 17 miles north of the city, uh, heading north from there. It's a combination of tanks, armored personnel carriers, supply vehicles, towed howitzers, that's the force that U.S. intelligence believes Russia is going to attempt to surround, encircle the capital, and then attempt from there, really, to take over the country. It's also starting to have Sweden supplying weapons now, uh, Germany, uh, a huge reversal of German policy to actually now supply, supply weapons. The question, I guess, is can they get here in time and can they get to the places where they're needed? My understanding from talking to U.S. officials is they've been able to keep those supply lines open. They're land routes. They're not coming in by air because Russia largely controls the airspace. But again, it's a numbers game here, right? When, when you look at the size of that force, uh, can the Ukrainian military apply an equal and opposite force yeah. against that? And, and that's an open question. Yeah.